Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sakshi Sethi. I manage the corporate membership program here at Optica, uh, formerly known as OIDA and OSA. Um, if you guys have any questions today, I'm going to be happy to assist you. Um, I'm happy to and excited to introduce today's webinar. It's sponsored by BPI Photonics. Go ahead and turn things over to the moderator, Chris Maloney, to introduce our speakers and himself and get us started. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sakshi, and thanks everybody for joining us today, taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, I'm Chris Maloney. I'm the Managing Director of U.S. Operations and the Director of Business Development for VPI Photonics. And today I'll be joined by our speakers, Dr. Igor Kolchinov, our Director of Technology and Fiber Optics Product Manager, as well as Pieter Novik, who's an optical R&D engineer at VPI Photonics. So I'll be introducing them uh, later on. Um, and for now, I'd, I'd like to start with just a, a brief background before we really get into the details um, around this webinar titled, A Simulation Environment for TKD Systems and Coexisting Classical Channels. So the, the first quantum revolution ushered in the laser and the transistor, which led to the development of computers and optical communications. But now the second quantum revolution is upon us and new technologies are leveraging now quantum mechanics. So um, shown here a, a patent analysis from the European Commission's Joint Research Center shows the upward trend in quantum computing patents over the last 20 years. And over the past few years, uh, national governments have been prioritizing uh, quantum research. And just recently, a number of quantum technology companies have become publicly traded companies, demonstrating their acceptance in the global economy. So as quantum computers evolve and become more available, um, cybersecurity becomes an important topic to consider as these computers will have the ability to break uh, current RSA cryptographic techniques. So two of the main methods um, for securing uh, data transmission from quantum vulnerability are post-quantum cryptography and quantum key distribution. So post-quantum cryptography or PQC implements quantum resistant algorithms deriving their security through mathematical complexity, whereas quantum key distribution or QKD uses physics principles to detect the presence of an eavesdropper and terminate transmission. So there's a whole debate on which one of these techniques is better, and they both have advantages and disadvantages, but we're not going to get in that, into that today. Um, today we'll be focusing on QKD. And as you can see in the, in the chart on the right, um, right in line with the quantum computing trend, uh, patents for QKD have been just as plentiful and will play an important role in the entire quantum computing story going forward. So at VPI Photonics, we're currently engaged in the Unicorn Project, which is part of the European Commission's Quantum Flagship Project. And so this project is made up of universities, photonic integrated circuit foundries, industrial partners, and end users. And at VPI Photonics, what we do is support the design automation and simulations for the project. And so there are actually four pillars um, to this project that span the entire value chain starting with uh, quantum systems on chips. Uh, the second pillar investigates uh, QKD system integration. The third focuses on uh, network integration. And finally, the last pillar addresses the various quantum protocols and applications. And so we actually contribute two ways to this project. The first is to um, help classically simulate photonic integrated circuits used to fabricate the chips. Um, through our foundry PDKs. So for example, with Smart Photonics and Fraunhofer HHI. And the second is to provide simulation tools for QKD protocols, which is what we'll be addressing today in this, in this webinar. So for this webinar, we'll actually get into some complicated details fairly quickly. So for those of you who may not be as familiar with the, the concept of QKD, I'll do my best to break it down um, break down the concept very simply for you. Um, so in a typical optical communication system, 
Alice will transmit a signal across an optical fiber or through free space. Um, and Bob will uh, receive that signal. Uh, but what happens if there's an, eave an eavesdropper, we'll call her Eve, and she starts to listen in on your signal? Well, Bob probably won't even notice this, aside from maybe some attenuation um, in the signal. But one thing that Alice can do is prepare a secret key that's used to encrypt or decrypt the data and pass it to Bob through a quantum channel. So um, you can think of this as passing single photons from Alice to Bob and having Bob measure them. And if Bob detects a certain number of errors in this key, this will indicate the, the presence of an eavesdropper. Um, as uh, the observation in a quantum system will typically disrupt that system. So if that's detected, communication will be aborted. Um, so this is actually just one oversimplified example that I'm giving you um, and how this might be imp implemented and in an ideal case. But in a practical setting, this may not be just a single photon, but it may be a weak coherent signal that Alice prepares. And we should also start to think about impairments in the system. So maybe the nonlinearities in the fiber, if it's spanning a long distance, um, dark count rates in the detector, Raman scattering or crosstalk between the signals and, and so on. Um, so this can actually become very complicated very quickly. Um, so a simulation solution is needed to explore these various design considerations and, and make the developments of such systems much more efficient. So luckily at uh, BPI Photonics, we're already experts in classical communications and modeling these imperfections and nonlinearities. So we can provide you with the, the tools to design, investigate, and optimize such systems. Um, so if you're not already familiar with, uh, with who we are, I can give you a brief overview here. Um, but at, at VPI Photonics, we've been providing um, software and services for photonic design and analysis internationally for over 20 years. And we, we like to describe our software as being integrated, interoperable, and industry leading. So it's integrated in the sense that our simulation techniques are actually integrated together. So for example, um, you, can divide, you can design a photonic integrated circuit and use it in a, in a full system design with our tools. So multiple tools are in the same, operate in the same design environment and in the same user interface. Um, they're also interoperable. So interoperable with many third-party software tools. So we support co-simulation with Python and MATLAB. And we also have some strong partnerships with other software vendors, including uh, Keysight ADS. Um, we also like to think of our software as industry leading. So we get involved in some of these research projects like the Unicorn Project and others to help further strengthen our software, but also to add new features. So I'll, I'll give you a, just a brief overview of our software solutions and our, our, flagship our flagship product is the VPI Photonics Design Suite, which includes transmission design and component design in the same design environment and user interface. So as I mentioned before, um, using VPI Component Maker Photonic Circuits, you could design a PIC um, and then use it in a hierarchical nature um, with VPI transmission maker optical systems. So maybe you design a, a modulator and you can see how it might behave or affect your um, performance in a full system. So using a transmitter, a uh, fiber model, and a, and a receiver, and maybe you can analyze something like the bit error rate. And where the our VPI toolkit QKD fits in is at this system level. So. So Igor will discuss this a little bit more, but it's it's really a, a model library um, for QKD um, systems. Um, we also um, support these other levels of abstraction. So at the very top for link engineering, um, uh, which would include cost optimized network design and planning, and, and at a lower level for device simulation for um, simulating waveguides and fibers. Um, so with that, I hope that gives you a brief introduction to QKD, but also to VPI Photonics and who we are. And at this point, I'm going to turn things over to Igor. So I'll stop sharing <clears throat> and he will uh, discuss the, the simulation framework here.
<clears throat> so Igor, if you can, um, if you uh, can unmute, show your video, share your screen, and I'll uh, I'll turn things over to you. And the the floor is yours, Igor. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris, and hello to everybody. In my presentation, I would like to discuss features of our simulation framework. The graphical user interface provides a schematic-based design environment, which allows the user to define various system configurations by selecting appropriate building blocks and interconnecting them, quite similar to construction toys. The simulator comes with a quite rich library of building blocks containing hundreds of optical, electrical, and numerical modules. The modules may be simple or complex, idealized to realistic, abstract, or detailed. In addition to building blocks, the library provides hundreds of application examples, which helps the user to shorten the learning curve and can be used as a starting point for the user's projects. An important feature of our design environment is automation of optimization tasks. Using the graphical interface, you can easily define simulation parameter sweeps, find minima or maxima, set target values, and so on. It is also possible to control simulations programmatically by creating and running simulation scripts. After the simulation is finished, the results are passed to the API Photonics Analyzer, which is a separate post-simulation application. It provides rich capabilities for visualization, analysis, and manipulation of data without the need to rerun simulations, which is quite important for long simulations. For instance, you can easily switch between the virtual optical spectrum analyzer and a scope, show the point carry sphere, apply electrical optical filters, polarizers, change the units, and so on. Finally, the simulator provides an API to many third-party tools and can both control external programs or be controlled from them. All these features make the simulator quite attractive not only for classical but also for quantum applications. Let me briefly discuss the workflow. As the first step, the user assembles a simulation schematic. For this, he or she selects the library modules that correspond to the real components. Then, the modules are interconnected in the same way as they are in the real system. During simulation, the modules exchange data following the globally defined signal types and numerical formats, which guarantees their compatibility. Each module has multiple parameters that initially are set to some typical values. For instance, a laser module may have parameters for the wavelength, power, and so on. The user can change the parameter values to match the actual ones. After that, the simulation schematic is ready for simulation. Note, there are different options to run simulations. For instance, electrical circuits are typically simulated using the SPICE engine, which is based on Kirchhoff flows. Another approach that works for linear electrical or optical circuits is based on the formalism of the scattering matrices. However, for simulation of transmission systems, the most effective approach is based on the data flow, which will be explained in the next slide. Upon the simulation start, the schematic modules are fired, that is, activated, one after another. The order of firings is defined by the simulation engine automatically based on the connectivity information. When a module is fired, it consumes signal data from its input port. Then it calculates the output signal according to a particular algorithm. The output data are then passed to the next module. The signal data are packed into signal blocks. For optical signals, our simulator supports a detailed and a coarse signal tip models. In the detailed model, optical signals are described in terms of complex amplitudes, which is the most complete classical description of light. Its amplitude A is discretized in the time and frequency domains and therefore represents arrays of complex valued signal samples. For system applications, the number of samples in one block may vary from hundreds to millions. The time interval delta P between samples defines the sample frequency F sub S. It is equal to the simulated bandwidth and should be chosen high enough to cover all important spectral features of the actual signal. The spacing between the samples in the frequency domain delta F defines the spectral resolution, which is equal to the reciprocal value of the simulation time window T. A conversion between the time and frequency domains is performed using the fast Fourier transform. 
if the polarization state changes in time or frequency, then the Jones calculus is used with the individual amplitudes AX and AY for the X and Y polarization components. Such signal model is referred to as an SFB, which is a single frequency block band. If a signal spectrum contains multiple non-overlapping bands, each band can be described by its own complex amplitude. Such signal model is called an MFP, that is multiple frequency band. This technique allows us to keep the size of the signal arrays under control. In particular, this is important for modeling coexistence scenarios when the classical and quantum channels are well separated in frequency. In many cases, however, it is not necessary to have a complete description of optical signals, and the core signal models may be used. For example, for calculations of the signal and noise powers, only power and wavelength data are required. Discrete spectral components are described by the parameterized signals, while a distributed noise spectrum is described by a collection of the noise pins. For the coarse models, each signal element contains only a few numbers, the wavelengths with the power and the components of the Stokes vector. This saves a lot of memory and computation effort and represents another important technique for modeling coexistence scenarios. This illustrates models for some basic components. For instance, a reflector is described by a 2 by 2 scattering matrix connecting the input and output signals for different propagation directions. An optical modulator is described by multiplying the signal amplitude by the modulator transmission function in the time domain. A complex value transmission function can be used to describe both the amplitude and phase modulation. Similarly, an optical filter can be easily described by applying complex value transfer function in the frequency domain. A key model for optical transmission is a fiber model. Our simulator contains an extremely powerful bidirectional fiber model. It can calculate signal propagation in the scalar and vectorial modes. The vectorial type model is needed to describe polarization effects such as PMD and polarization dependent on linear effects, including the Raman scattering. Mathematically, the fiber model is described by nonlinear differential equations in distance and time. The linear terms describe the loss and chromatic dispersion. The nonlinear terms describe the kernel linearity and the stimulated Raman scattering. The latter is widely used to amplify the optical signals in order to compensate the propagation loss. As we know, optical amplification is always accompanied by noise generation due to the spontaneous scattering. The spontaneous Raman scattering is modeled by generation of the noise pins I mentioned before. Furthermore, the fiber model supports spontaneous and stimulated brilliant scattering and relay scattering. This is an example of how the fiber model can be applied to estimate the amount of spontaneous Raman scattering. Here, the classical channel in the C-band propagates in the forward direction. A much weaker quantum channel at a shorter wavelength propagates in the backward direction. The Stokes and anti-Stokes Raman scattering is an extremely wide band physical effect with a spectral width of several hundred of nanometers. For this reason, using the core signal representation based on noise pins is crucial. Also, the classical channel is simulated here using the coarse representation based on the parameterized signals. In contrast, the quantum channel is simulated using a detailed model based on complex amplitudes. Note that within the bandwidth of the signal frequency band, the noise pins are automatically converted to the sampled representation and modeled by a random process. The fiber model can visualize a special distribution of the signals and noise power, which helps to choose an optimum system configuration. As we can see, spontaneous Raman scattering leads to an increase in the noise level at the output of the photodetector, which takes into account both short noise and Raman noise. This example has been modeled using the standard classical simulator. While it's able to estimate the excess noise due to Raman scattering, it is unable to predict its effect on the CQAQ rate of a QQD channel. The discussed simulation framework is quite powerful and it has been successfully used to solve various design problems for a wide range of applications in optical transmission. For instance, you can simulate short reach and long haul applications investigate various transmission technologies like direct detection and coherent detection, compare various modulation formats, develop these algorithms, and do much more. 
It seems natural to extend the capabilities of this versatile simulation environment to support quickly ad advancing quantum communication technologies. For this reason, the API developed the API to QQD, a new product that enables system-level QQD simulations. It is an add-on to the existing simulation environment. The toolkit contains models for QQD transmitters and receivers, parameter and secret key rate estimation, and application examples. It provides unique capabilities for studying the coexistence scenarios when the classical and quantum channels are transmitted over the same fiber, which can be simultaneously simulated using the same simulation schematic. Furthermore, the toolkit can be used to investigate various implementation options of QQD systems. Using realistic component models, the toolkit allows the user to analyze various imperfections, like various noise sources, non-ideal splitting ratios, tag current rates after pulsing, and so on. The characteristics of QQD systems are evaluated in terms of QBR, secure key rate, maximum transmission distance, and so on. Thus, the toolkit makes professional component design information available for the QQD technology. However, there are many challenges along this way. Let me briefly mention them. First, in general, the size of quantum state space is very large and can easily exceed the capabilities of computers. For instance, consider a quite small in terms of classical simulation signal with only 1,000 frequency samples. As human only zero or one photons per frequency, the quantum description requires a state space dimension of 2 to the power of 1000, which exceeds the number of particles in the observable universe. Therefore, we should restrict simulations to particular quantum states, such as single photon states, coherent states, squeeze states, and so on. Second, classical photonic models are not applicable for, to quantum states. For instance, an action of an optical coupler is described by a scattering matrix that is applied to the field operators, which requires symbolic calculations. In contrast, in the classical simulations, the scattering matrix is applied to signal amplitudes, which are just conventional numbers. So, the data flow approach is not directly compatible with the entangled photons that propagate along individual optical paths. In the data flow model, all information required to calculate the output from the input must be available locally to each module. As we know from the Bell's theorem, this is incompatible with the quantum description. The data flow model needs an extension to operate with global entangled states. Also, there are other challenges, such as high computation effort, sophisticated risk reconciliation and error correction schemes, numerous QQD protocols, and so on. In what follows, my colleague Peter will discuss the API approach to these problems. For now, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Igor, for that discussion around the, the simulation framework. Um, so now, now we're going to move right along to uh, Peter Novik. Um, so Peter will discuss uh, the, our approach for QKD, so including the QKD building blocks, uh, discussion of a coexistence scenario, as well as show us uh, a live demonstration in VPI Design Suite. Um, so Peter, I'll, in, I'll invite you to unmute, uh, turn your video on, and uh, the, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Chris. <clears throat> so hello, everybody again. So my part of presentation is dedicated to the questions uh, what allows us to use classical simulation framework uh, to simulate uh, QPD protocols and how do we use it to simulate QPD protocols. So uh, to use our simulation framework, uh, we focused on weak coherent prepare and measure QPD. It's a practical QPD technology that does not need to address the simulation of entangled or squeezed states. Um, in this case, we can use the classical electric field amplitudes to store information of the coherent state amplitudes. And uh, for linear optical components such as beam splitters, polarizers, filters or modulators, uh, this has the convenient side effect that uh, transformation rules of coherent states in these representations are the same as for the classical signal. Therefore, we don't need to apply any changes to algorithm, algorithms in our software. And uh, in cases when uh, one can neglect the squeezing effects, even nonlinear components can be used. 
Uh, also, uh, we can use sufficiently high sampling rates for resolving multiple coherent states per symbol. That allows to simulate signal waveforms, filtering, jitter, and uh, so on. In our simulation software, quantum fluctuations are modeled in the receivers via the short noise for CVK applications or by photon counting in the applications. Uh, electrical excess noise, such as thermal noise of photodiodes, can be modeled as a voltage fluctuations, while optical excess noise, such as uh, Raman scattering or relative intensity noise, can be modeled as a quadrature fluctuation of our states. So, now let's talk in more details what is quick coherent prepared measure QPD. In weak coherent prepared measure QPD, Ellis prepares laser pulses and sends them to Bob, who measures them and after retrieves the encoded information. Uh, monochromatic light, a laser light, can be described as a single mode coherent state alpha, where alpha uh, uh, is a complex number. Alternatively, uh, it can be described as a display displacement operator uh, acting on the waking state. Uh, so here you can see this formula. Uh, and pulsed laser light uh, can be described by multi-mode coherent states. That is multiple displacement operators acting on different modes and are subsequently applied to the waking state. So, and note that in this case, the multi-mode coherent states can be characterized by the complex amplitudes alpha of the frequency mode. And thus, we don't need to, you know, to use a lot of computer memory to store quantum signal in our software. So, in order to apply our classical simulation framework of weak coherent PPD, we need to simulate the optical system's effect on coherent states. As was mentioned before, uh, we use the classical electric field amplitude of our classical signal model to store all information of the multi-mode coherent states. But we don't, we don't just write the coherent state amplitudes into the array usually holding the electric field amplitudes instead. Instead, we use a more sophisticated approach where we obtain the frequency domain electric field amplitudes from the frequency domain coherent states amplitude by scaling them with the square root photon energy. Uh, this formula caused by the fact that by the relations of energy between photon number representation and electrical amplitude and representation. So, the time domain electric field amplitudes are then obtained via inverse discrete Fourier transform. So, for calculating the time domain coherent state amplitudes, we have to Fourier transform the time domain electric field, scale it with the photon energy, and apply inverse Fourier transform. We use this slightly complicated representation because the quantum optical electric field operator looks like this. Uh, and thus, in this representation, the quantum optical expectation values of power, the electric field, the power spectrum, and the phase inside with the classical results. So, as I mentioned, uh, we created QQD specific modules, and one of the main modules is a QQD transmitter. As an input, it takes the quadratures of the coherent states, that is, real and imaginary part of coherent amplitude alpha, and then forms a laser pulses of rectangular or sine or form with specified amplitude and phase. On the right, you can see scheme of the transmitter. The laser source is divided into two parts. One is a strong signal for the phase reference that can be used uh, by a receiver as a local oscillator. Uh, and the second branch is used for the quantum signal. To form a quantum signal, amplitude and phase modulation is performed. Finally, we have a weak quantum signal carrying information and a strong local oscillator signal for the phase reference as far as the local oscillator line width, line width can be non zero. So now let's go to the, our simulation software and I will show how it works in uh, real life. So here we have our transmitter. 
And first, what we need to do is to specify the quadratures. We use for that these arrays. Uh, and now we can try to run the simulation. And here is what we get. So now we see four pulses uh, with different phases and with different number of photon impulses. These numbers of photons uh, and phases are described by these quadratures. So what we can see here is that in the pulse in the orange area, we have approximately two and a quarter of photons. Uh, with the phase equals uh, approximately to uh, 180 degrees. Uh, and uh, that can be done for billions or millions of symbols in the simulation. So, to sum up, uh, we used the Q and P quadratures uh, to specify the phase and number of photons in our pulses that we want to transmit from Ellis to Bob. Uh, and the phase and the number of photons in these pulses coincide with the theoretical predictions in this table. Other <clears throat> very important module in our TTD toolkit is a heterodyne receiver. Here you can see our model of the heterodyne receiver uh, and building blocks that included in it. Uh, this image just not just illustrates the, the receiver, but actually defines its behavior. So here the local oscillator and the quantum signal are mixed at the hybrid kind module. And after the optical signals are converted to the electrical signals by photodiodes. After we use a simplified model of transimpedance amplifier with low pass filtering, uh, and using analog to digital converter, we finally get measured values of quadratures. Our heterodyne receiver model includes such imperfections such as uh, thermal noise, common mode projection generation, ADC quantization noise and saturation, and shot noise. Also, it can perform such real-world procedures as self-calibration. So, what is self-calibration? Uh, in real-world uh, setups, the output of heterodyne receiver is not uh, measured quadratures, but some electrical signal that must be scaled to get the measured values of the quadratures. So, and in that case, this scaling coefficient must be found. Uh, in our software, we scale them to so-called shot noise units. Uh, variance of measured quadratures caused by uncertainty principle equals exactly to one shot noise unit. To find scaling coefficient between heterodyne receiver out and quadratures, we use method described in the paper mentioned uh, in the bottom of the slide. So first. Uh, we block both inputs of the heterodyne receiver and measure just the noise of the receiver. After, we unblock the local oscillator and additionally to the receiver noise, we measure quantum fluctuation noise. As far as they are independent, so the variances of these noises uh, are just some. Uh, and we want to make uh, the variance of uh, uh, vacuum fluctuations equals to one. So that allows us to find the scaling coefficient just subtracting these two variances. And now again, let's go to our simulation software. Uh, we are, have prepared schematic where we perform such uh, measurements. So. Uh, here we prepare approximately 1 million of laser pulses uh, that are sent to the heterodyne receiver. So we define that the pulse quadratures equals to three shot noise units. Uh, and uh, as the receiver, we form simultaneous homodyne uh, measurements of both quadratures. And after, uh, we plot a histogram of uh, measured quadratures. So here you can see the results. 
So the mean values and variances of measured quadratures are in good agreement with theory as far as well as their probability density functions. So here you can see the phase space of the coherent state and individual uh, probability density functions of the of both quadratures. Uh, now we can go closer. So on this slide, you can see uh, building blocks for the continuous variable quantity distribution. For CVTPD, we added uh, ideal model of the transmitter and ideal and realistic receiver uh, building blocks. Uh, and uh, we added building blocks for simple selection and post-processing. Most importantly, we added an estimator of the channel transmitters and excess noise and secret key rate estimator uh, that can calculate secret key fraction both for asymptotic and finite size scenario. So here in the circle uh, are presented the main modules of uh, our building blocks for CVTPD, that is the transmitter and the receiver. On this slide you can see building blocks for DVTPD. For DVTPD we have a set of receivers and transmitters for different protocols such as differential phase shift protocols and BB84-like protocols with toy states. Also, we have protocol building blocks for symbol selection and all post processing. And also, we have a secret fraction estimator for T12 protocol for any size scenario. The main module for the DVQTD application is our SPAD module. Our single photon counting module represents a black box model. Uh, simulating APD and its electronics. As an input, it takes the optical signal and then it outputs the timestamps uh, where the avalanche released inside of the spots. Our spot module includes such imperfections as dead time, Gaussian time and jitter, exponential time and jitter, after pulsing effects and dark holes. Additionally, it can uh, operate in the gated mode. On this histogram, uh, you see the click times of SPAT, and here you can see uh, the Gaussian peak caused by the Gaussian time and jitter, small exponential tail of, of time and jitter, and the background dark counts. And now we can go to application demonstrations of our software. So the first application demonstration uh, is dedicated to the Gaussian modulated CVQP. Uh, in this simulation, uh, we use a true local oscillator, and for the phase reference, we use a pilot. So, here uh, we have a laser source, uh, which is amplitude modified to get uh, the desired uh, wave shape of the pulses. Then, it's divided into two parts. One part is modulated to form a quantum weak signal, and the second part uh, is part, creates a pilot tone that is offset one gigahertz from the quantum channel in order to distinguish them. Additionally, we made the polarization of pilot tone orthogonal to the polarization of the quantum channel. Then both channels propagate through the fiber. In our case, we simulate the fiber with the attenuator. Uh, and then Bob measures both quadratures of the pilot tone and the quantum signal. If Bob just uh, uses the measurement result before the phase recovery, his result will carry no phase information. And in that case, the secret key, uh, the secret key distillation will be impossible. To get the proper state, he needs to perform phase recovery. For that purposes, we use the measured quadratures of the pilot tone, and after the phase recovery, we get the correct signal, and now the secret key distillation is possible. After um, 
after the secret key estimation is performed uh, and the QKD protocol is over. So, uh, additionally, uh, here uh, we can use our software to find the optimal modulation variance to maximize the secret key fraction. Uh, as well as uh, define the maximal, maximum transmission distance of such system. So we can see here, the smaller is the distance, the bigger modulation variance uh, can Alice use to transmit of the secret uh, stream. Um, so here you can also see the joint optical spectrum of pilot pole and the quantum signal. So other very interesting application example is the existing study in multi-core fibers. So it is known that Raman scattering due to the classical channels so strongly deteriorates hardware and it needs to be suppressed. So uh, frequency and spatial separation is used to suppress. And our simulation framework allows to simulate such experimental setups uh, and simulate simultaneously propagation of quantum and classical channels in the same fiber. So, uh, here you can see the schematic of this experimental setup. And here we have Alice's QPD transmitter that produces the quantum signal. And uh, also we have source with the classical transmitters. First, we simulate their propagation separately in their cores. So for uh, quantum signal, we use just usual attenuator as far as uh, we are not interested in such effects as Raman scattering caused by the quantum channel and so on. For the classical transmitter, we use our uh, universal fiber module that includes uh, Raman, spontaneous Raman scattering. After the propagation, if the leakage from the classical cores to the quantum cores are measured, we can add this Raman noise, uh, Raman noise uh, to the quantum channel, uh, and then uh, we can investigate how does it affects uh, the quantum channel. So here uh, we can change the launch power of the classical channel and to look how does the optical spectrum of the quantum channel uh, changes when we change the classical channel power. So here we can see the spectrum of QPD signal after DVDM filter. And as far as we increase the power of the classical channel, uh, we see how it uh, affects the quantum channel. And also we can look how does it affect the waveform of the same pulses. So in case when there is no classical channels, uh, we have rather good and smooth uh, waveforms. But when we increase the classical channel's powers, this waveform spoils. But if you look at the waveform, we cannot estimate the secret key rate. So for that purposes, we can use our simulation software to measure such uh, important metrics as a QBAR. Unfortunately, simulation of uh, QBAR is, takes uh, approximately one hour, so I prepared these results before. So, and now you can see the results. How does the QBAR depends on the classical channel power? So as we see, it increases. So and uh, uh, reaches 12% when the classical channel power equals to 10 volts. So so yes, uh, our as I said, we can uh, simulate the simultaneous. Uh, propagation of quantum and classical channels, and the results are in very good agreement with the results presented uh, in uh, public, uh, published papers. Uh, this paper is mentioned in the bottom of the slide. So that is all about uh, applications, example of our simulation software. 
and now a bit uh, about our plans for the future. So uh, we want to support more PKD protocols in our software. Uh, for example, we want to simulate uh, discrete CV QKD, discrete modulation CV QKD protocols, uh, or uh, Razon U pro MDI, Razon U MDI protocols. Uh, also, we want to simulate uh, not very new how protocol, as far it's uh, it is uh, implemented in commercial systems. Uh, also, we are interested in uh, satellite-based uh, QKD, as far as in our uh, classical software. Uh, we have uh, modules for the free space optical channels. So, uh, it is promising to use these modules to simulate the satellite-based QKD. Also, we are interested in adding a uh, classical pulse processing step to uh, simulate the full QKD uh, protocol. So, and the classical pulse processing, including such uh, procedures as uh, mapping to the binary channels or error correction of the received uh, uh, secret uh, strings. And finally, we are looking for opportunity to simulate entangled based protocols or single photon sources, uh, which can be very interesting for us and uh, it's still uh, gives us a lot of challenges. So we are open collaboration for further collaborations and thank you for your attention. Yes, thanks, Peter. And uh, if you just go to the next slide, um, I'd just like to thank everybody today for, for listening in. But yeah, if you're, if you're interested in learning more, um, please feel free to reach out to us. You have our website, our email there. Um, and you can contact us for a free demo of the software. So if we want Peter to go a little bit deeper into your specific interests, we can do that. Um, and we also offer software evaluations as well. Um, so I'd like to thank our, our speakers again, Peter, Igor, thank you so much for the, the detailed technical discussion around this. Um, and yeah, again, please reach out to us um, if you're looking to collaborate. If you're looking for a further demo of the software or even to evaluate it, um, yeah, we're, we're open for that. So yeah, we, we look forward to hearing from, from you. Great. Well, I'd like to, to thank everybody for your attention today and, uh, and for the time, taking time out of your busy schedules. And uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Chris, and thanks again to Peter and Iger for presenting. Um, thank you all for attending. Uh, BPI Photonics contact information is on the screen, so if you haven't already had a chance to make note of that, um, be sure to do so. Um, so that's everything we have today. Thanks again for joining, and I'll see you guys at the next webinar. Thanks, see you. Bye. Bye.